It's a beautiful morning, the birds are singing, the sun is out, and you're ready to take on the day full force. But first, coffee. Without coffee, you feel like there's a fog in your brain, you feel like a zombie. But you know that as soon as you get your first sip of coffee, everything is going to be okay. So you get the water boiling and take out your fancy contraption. And... Oh, man. You ran out. Now, this is the most glorified form of addiction in our society. But the ironic thing is that having a dependency of any form is often perceived negatively. But when it comes to coffee, we have all sorts of merchandise and pop culture glorifying it. But before I tell you about how I quit coffee, I want to quickly mention that this video is in collaboration with Kyra Button. I know a lot of you guys found me through my studio apartment videos and Kyra actually has a lot of videos on her channel on small space living and she has a really fun personality and I think you guys will really enjoy watching her videos so check her out link in the description now back to the video I attempted quitting many times in the past because I was spending upwards of $50 a month on it. And also I just didn't like the feeling of being so dependent on anything. And I knew that if I don't do something about it, over time the dependency is only going to get stronger and stronger. So earlier this year, there was a week where I was working from home and I happened to run out of coffee. And during this time, there was this severe snowstorm in Toronto. So going out was the last thing I wanted to do. And because I was working from home, there was really no reason for me to go out. So in short, my laziness helped me to quit. During the first two days, my withdrawal symptoms were crazy. I had a constant headache and I felt like there was this fog over my brain. I couldn't really think about anything clearly and I could feel my temples pulsating all the time. But on the third day, I went for a run in my gym. That little bit of exercise really helped to kick out those withdrawal symptoms. And after that, I didn't need coffee anymore. Now I can get out of bed feeling fully charged, my energy level is very stable, and I know that my alertness doesn't have a time limit. I can also go to bed earlier and have much better sleep. And most importantly, I can save at least $50 a month. I'm also not contributing to coffee-related waste, like packaging, coffee cups and lids, which can add up to be a lot when it's consumed on a daily basis. And now I can cut all of that from the root. <laughs> Every year, I like to challenge myself to either start a new habit or to eliminate a bad habit. So on my 27th birthday, I asked myself, what is one small thing that I can cut from my life that's going to have a definite positive impact? And the first thing that came to mind was alcohol. I was definitely the type of person that loved to drink. I not only drink socially, I also like to drink by myself. My favorite way to unwind on a Friday is to get a bottle of cheap wine or some kind of beer. And I also like to order beer with every single meal that I eat out. So when I quit alcohol, I can at least save $100 a month. The second benefit to quitting alcohol is the time saving. Now I no longer go to social events where drinking is a focus. Usually after a night of drinking, the whole evening would have been wasted because there's just really nothing productive I could do when I was intoxicated. And the next day is often spent recovering from the hangovers. And number three is the health benefit. And for me, that is prevention. Why wait until you have health problems that are related to alcohol? My favorite quote from Lao Tzu is, anticipate the difficult by managing the easy. Do the things when it's still easy and tackle hard problems before it gets difficult. As I get older, I realize that my body takes longer and longer to recover from drinking. So that one moment of pleasure is really just not worth several days of suffering. And the last benefit to quit drinking is I spare myself from any of the potential embarrassment and regrets. When I was younger, I always thought the drunk me was the real me because when I was drinking, I would be a lot more carefree and extroverted. But as I get older, I really appreciate sobriety. And I think there's just nothing more valuable than having a healthy, functional mind. From my experience, the type of conversations and connections that I form over alcohol are often very short-lived. And also, I found that it's really easy to gossip or badmouth someone when I was drinking because I just didn't have any filter. But since quitting, I removed myself from that entire situation. 
I think it's okay to have judgmental thoughts because we often can't control what's in our mind and there is no need to beat ourselves up for it. But also it's important to stop there at the thought level. There's no need to voice it or act on it. What prompted me to quit meat is really just out of curiosity. I just wanted to see what it's like to not eat meat for an extended period of time. So I did a 30 day no meat challenge. And at the time, I was having a pretty bad acne problem. Uh, and the prescription from my family doctor didn't really work. It actually made my skin really dry and I felt like my entire face was just on fire. So I stopped the prescription and I started to look for other alternatives. So I saw a few people talking about how the vegan diet helped them to clear up their skin. So that's why I decided to give this a try. So during that 30 day process, I was meal prepping every single week and I was eating so much veggies, like more vegetables than I have ever had in my entire life. Even though it didn't cure my acne problem, but at the end of the 30 day period, I just felt really nourished by the food that I was eating. And I just felt no need to go back to my old diet. And now it's been two years since I stopped eating meat and I'm able to now slowly cut down more and more animal products for my life. The benefit of not eating meat is that I'm able to get so much more veggies into my system. In the past, I always felt like the meal is not complete without some kind of meat. And it's really easy to overeat to a point where I hate myself. I'm sure we've all had that experience where either you go to a barbecue or you go to a hot pot place and you just order so much food to the point where you just don't want to eat anything for like two weeks. But when it comes to veggies, even if you overeat, it can be digested very quickly. And in all cases, everything just gets pooped out the very next day. And that brings us to the second benefit, which is when you're eating a plant-based diet, you never get constipated. And I love that. The third benefit is that it's really easy to prepare a plant-based meal because you don't have to worry about cross-contamination. You can prepare everything from the same cutting board using the same knife. And also you can save a lot of money because vegetables are just a lot more cheaper as it should be. Now I went into the plant-based diet because I wanted to improve my skin. My skin is definitely better than two years ago, but there's a lot more factors than just diet. I'm also older, so my hormone levels are more balanced. But one unexpected benefit is that I lost all the stubborn fat around my waistline. I'll insert a picture of me from two years ago. That's when I lost a lot of fat. Uh, now I'm slowly gaining it back because I started to eat out again as I'm discovering more and more delicious vegan restaurants. So if you're interested or are curious about incorporating more plant-based diet into your life, I definitely recommend giving it a try. If you don't like it, you can always go back. But I think we can all agree that there's benefits to exploring new habits or lifestyles that can potentially improve our life. <laughs> So like I said before, I have this ongoing battle with acne since I was 12 and now I'm 28 and I still get these occasional breakouts. Uh, in the past few years, I've always wore foundation every single day. I'm the type of person that would not step out the door without putting on foundation. And the ironic thing is that I'm not even into makeup. I'm only wearing foundation to cover up all my blemishes. And this is such a vicious cycle because foundation can be a huge burden on the skin. It can clog up the pores, which can lead to more acne breakouts. And the more acne I get, the more foundation I need to put on my face. But as I get older, I realized that my skin actually started to reject foundation. Uh, at the end of the day, my makeup can look really cakey, which makes me look older. And that is what motivated me to go foundation free. Now it's been a few months since I quit foundation and I can really tell that my skin has gotten a lot better and I don't have as many breakouts as before. By going foundation free, I also don't need to buy any of the peripheral products like brushes, beauty blenders, makeup removers and cotton rounds and things like that. And I can take that money that I saved and put it toward better skincare. The opposite of addiction is connection. By quitting coffee, I'm more connected to my mind and my body. By quitting alcohol, I feel more connected to people. And I'm not just experiencing that connection through alcohol. By quitting meat, I feel more connected to the food that I eat. And by quitting foundation, I feel more connected to my self-image and my self-worth. And most importantly, I feel way more connected to my wallet. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you feel inspired to eliminate something from your life so that we can all live a life that is healthier and lighter. I'm Tina Tomato and I will see you next week. Do, 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 do.